That was all right. I think I hit. I think I, I hit a flat note during that, but there we are. Brenda Cochrane is the lady. Got a great voice and her version of that classic uh, Al Hibler number, Unchained Melody. It's my great pleasure now to talk to the man who's who has to carry the burden of being known as the man who brought down Simon Cowell. It's John Water. Hello, John. <laughs> Hello, Billy. How are you, lad? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? Okay, now listen, I can tell by your track record you're really good. You've done some great things with the Hillsborough Tribute single. You've, you did wonderful things for Radio 6. Now, this latest quest of yours to make Honey Bee, Honey G, number one at Christmas. <laughs> now, what's that going to take, John? Well, first of all, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't actually know who Honey G is. Oh, God. So, she, <laughs> she's the latest X Factor joke. You know they have a joke contestant on oh, every year. Me. Oh, yeah. my word. Oh, my word. But that's, that's probably why I haven't heard of her, I have to say. So uh, I, I, I'll duck out of that one, Billy. So tell us, tell us what, 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 how do I describe you, John? Are you a, a media guru or what? Well, that's a good question because I never really know what to describe myself as if I'm Brutally honest with you. Well, successful um, I, might do. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I, 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 New York Times called me a social media hellraiser, and I, I kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, I like one, that. Actually. Yeah. So I'll, I'll stick that one on the CV, you know. So, um, yes, I suppose I'm a. I, I work in social media, and I, I just try and get things done, really. I mean, the tonight about being known as a social media hellraiser, the BBC will never phone you. Well, yeah, oh, well I, I have. I've got in trouble with the BBC a few years ago. Well, that's ago anyway. quite easy. <laughs> Okay, now you're coming up. Uh, let's talk about the, um, the, the 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 um the, the single that you 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 did with Age Against the Machine. Okay, I mean you 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 like many 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 of us were fed up with the the domination of the Christmas number one by Simon Cowell. Yeah. But none of us did anything about it. You did. How did it come to you? And did did you realise that social media would make this possible? Well, you know what, I, you're right, after years of, of the same thing happening every year, and I, I just snapped one year, and I just thought, you know what, I can't do this anymore. And um, by chance, I had been playing around with social media at the time, and just seeing what I could do with it, really. And I, tried, I just worked out that I could marry the two together, and I just thought, you know what, I really think I could get a big enough crowd together, all to buy another record... And if we all buy the same one, then we can make that number one instead. So that was kind of how it how it came about, really. But then you made a yeah. point of picking one of the most outrageous ones to even <laughs> rub it in more. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, look, hey, I'm, I'm a massive Rage Against the Machine fan anyway, and I just thought, you know what? What would be the most opposite thing from the X Factor possible uh, that people would get behind? And I just thought, oh, wouldn't it be brilliant to have a real nice, loud rap metal shouty tune anthem? At Christmas number one, how wacky would that be? And so, yeah, it, it was just a crazy idea that a lot of people obviously picked up on. So, Des O'Connor never came to mind at all. <laughs> Des was second in the list, Billy. Des was second. Just well, what was what was the band's attitude to it, John? They must have been delighted. Yeah, well, the, the, I, I was quite shocked in a way because I, I thought that the band, in a very punk way, wouldn't be that bothered about it. But yeah. actually, they got in touch and they were supportive. They tweeted lots. And then what they did is they said, look, hey, if this goes to number one, um, we will do a free concert in the UK. And, but it, whether it goes to number one or not, we will give all the money that we've made from it, because we weren't expecting it. We're going to give all the money to British charities. Uh, so we won't make a penny out of it. And it'll just be you know, a good bit of fun. And um, yeah, they, they were brilliant. They really are. And then you had the success with the uh, the justice campaign, which, in, in all fairness, we did have the media on our side from the word go there, didn't we? Yeah, and I have to say, that was um, a very, very humbling experience for me. To be asked to be involved with that anyway was just wonderful. And to to really be in part of the team from, you know, yeah, like a small seed to becoming the Christmas number one, uh, it was just a wonderful experience. It really is, and um, yeah, and, and that, which is partly why, genuinely speaking, Liverpool feels like my second home. You know, you guys yeah. are so wonderful to me whenever I come over. And uh, do you think about the, the, you also had to pay, didn't you? You had to pay justice, didn't you, to the actual original single by the Hollies? You had to make sure that it could compare with it, didn't you? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, um, and in fairness, one of the you know, I, I wasn't singing on it or playing on it, which is a great start, <laughs> really. <Yeah. laughs> I've got no talent in that side of things. But 
Yeah, I mean, the, I think the guys did a fantastic job on that single. It, that they did the song justice. They put an extra bit of of love into it as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I'm, I mean, I'm immensely proud to be involved with that. I really am. Now, now, two more of your great successes. And this this one, I don't think it would have been as easy as you might have thought. Uh, the, the re-release of Exile on Main Street. I mean, now one of these people who is is, is, is I'm I'm not grabbed in when they say remastered and remixed. It doesn't mean all that much to me. Same as HD doesn't on the telly. <laughs> well, the Exile on Main Street. Yeah, of course. I mean, I was very very lucky to be asked. Um, if I would want to work on, um, you know, to work on a Rolling Stones campaign, and naturally, you know, you don't turn down the Rolling Stones, no, no. do you? And a re-release is, it, it is it's difficult, I would say. Well, it was it was hard work, but what the little trump card they had was that um, there was a few sort of hidden, not hidden tracks, but some tracks that had been unearthed, apparently, for, for the first time in 30, 40 years. And um, they just gave them a bit of a remaster, and essentially there were a, a few new tracks as it were, yeah. from 1972, thrown on the end, and yeah. they were brilliant tracks. And that, I think that helped it a lot, really. that's what That's what layers you're in, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you have got a particular favourite, even if it just says one new track, you buy the blinking thing, don't you? Well, you do indeed. And, and you know, it, it's a great album anyway, and so I, I know a lot of new fans bought it again. And, um, yeah, we, and it went to number one as well. So, I was, again, another campaign I'm, I'm very proud to be involved with, yeah. But probably um, on a par with the Justice Collective will be the, the, the campaign to save Radio 6. Well, again, it was part of a team. There was, there was a good hardcore team of us that we all sort of clubbed together and thought, we can't have this. We cannot have Radio 6 Music, which was a wonderful radio station, um, up for the chop. So we thought, uh, well, hey, look, if we can get Rage Against the Machine to number one, then um, I'm sure we can, me and my, my then wife Tracy, we thought, well, why don't we see if we can create some sort of campaign to save it? And lots of people also had the same idea. So we kind of all came together. We had a few protests outside the BBC. We were doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things. And, um, yeah, it, it was just such a great team effort from so many people. And, um, yeah, well, we got it saved. So, um, and it's going nice and strong today. Which okay, is I mean, I mean that, that's a plus, isn't it? The figures today justify everything you did. Absolutely. Well, we'd like to think so, yeah. 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 Okay, now, you're, you're also involved with the Peter Jones Academy, where apparently you have to have oxygen masks to talk to him. <laughs> the Peter Jones Academy. Yeah, well, that was, a, that was just a, a speech that um, uh, Peter asked me to do for his academy students. And, um, um, yes, again, that was, you know, a, a great thing to get involved with. Um, new, great, uh, fresh ideas in a massive room. And, um, again, really, really quite proud to, to have been involved with that, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'd love Peter Jones to phone me so I could say I'm out. <laughs> So you're up, you're up in Liverpool uh, the 8th and 9th at the Exhibition Centre. That's right, Billy, yes. Um, I'm going to be speaking uh, as part of the Venue Expo, uh, which is on the 8th and 9th of November. Um, now, it's, it's at the Liverpool Exhibition Centre, and it's basically um, um, it's free to attend. It's, yeah. So there's no, no charge to turn up. You do have to register, uh, which is on venueexpo.co.uk. Uh, speak to Harry and the team, and they will uh, get, sort your tickets out. Um, and, yeah, it, it's basically it's an event that um, um, looks very big. It's lots of people coming from the UK and Europe. Lots of industry specialists there, and I'm going to be there um, giving away some secrets, basically. Will, will, will you be talking mainly from the entertainment level? Well, that's where I'm known for, so, so yes, I will be. Yeah. But what I'll be talking about is uh, we'll have a few learnings in it, so I'm gonna, hopefully I'm going to try and put some knowledge across on, on social for businesses and things like that. Uh, but also, I do it in more of a story. So I'm going to be telling yeah. some of the uh, naughty little secrets that I used back for Rage Against the Machine and some of the other things that I've done that, I've, that the media didn't uh, didn't tell you. So yeah. I will. And you've got to, you put humour in with you put humour in with the facts and figures, and it it, it works, doesn't it, Peter? John, uh, I mean, John. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not a fan of standing up on stage and just um, giving out lots of ideas, tips. And here's a bar chart, that yeah. kind of thing. You know, I yeah. just think that's a little bit boring. And I can, I'm quite lucky where I can, I can talk from experience and stories that I've been involved with, things I've done wrong. I've done a lot of things wrong, and I've made a lot of mistakes. And I'm happy to sort of, you know, yeah, set myself up a little bit of where I have gone wrong, because I think that's that's a, can be a really good learning curve, not only for myself but for 
Well, hopefully for others as well, you know. Well, being on the radio for a long time myself, I've, I've, I've got experience of the early days when, when the record pluggers used to come round and see you. And you could always tell the ones who'd done the business, like, you get a record plug and come round and he'd say, all right, Billy, said, listen, I know what kind of stuff you play. Here's what I think would fit in with your show. They took time to do that. Now, of course, you just get stuff posted to you. But the promo guys really worked hard to know their job. Yes, absolutely. And I think that, that, that um, ideology should still, be, should still be there, really, because if you do do a little bit of background research on who you're talking to and who you're dealing with and the people that are going to be there, and, and to try and mould it for them, really, then you can do your job better, can't you? So, so that's, yeah, that's what I, I try and do in, in everything I do, really, yeah. Okay, it's uh, it's the it's the venue next person. The only show in the north tailored towards PAs, executive assistants, office managers, and tea makers. It's absolutely free, and John Morton Morton is the keynote speaker, and I need to follow him. John, yes. lovely talking to you. Yeah? Really a pleasure, sir. Thank I, you. I'm going to play one now, which we'd love to hear on Radio Six. It's by one of our top local bands, the Mono LPs. Fantastic. John, lovely talking to you. Yeah? Thank you, Billy. Have a great day. And you, mate. How to express the little